Uh, with me to discuss more on the breaking news about the president of Burkina Faso uh, stepping down is Lamine Konkabe from BBC Afrique and Ayo Johnson, who's an African affairs analyst. So much to talk about. Even when we were off air, the conversation was continuing because now um, I know we've talked a lot about the circumstances of this resignation. But let me we were talking about who is the obvious successor for this vacant position now as president of Burkina Faso. You've got someone in mind. Uh, somebody in mind, but uh, we can have a name that is totally different from what people have been calling for. The, the name of General uh, uh, Luge, Kwame Luge, this is the name people have been, uh, you know, shouting this morning at the Nation Square and in front of the Army Headquarters this morning. This is the name they have been shouting. And very likely, if they have to really follow the wishes of the crowd, uh, we are likely going to hear very soon that Kwame Luge has assumed interim leadership. And what do we know about this man? He was a former defense minister of Blaise Compaore, but he fell out with Blaise Compaore over an issue that had to do with the private presidential security guard. They are uh, better armed. They have, you know, a better equipped arsenal. And... Uh, officers and soldiers uh, who are part of uh, that regiment are better paid, well treated. And Luge as a defense minister said that this is not right. You have to disband that army within the army. Of course, Blaise Compare couldn't stand to be lectured by his defense minister and he got him sacked. And a year later, uh, they uh, accused him on Trump charges of uh, a coup attempt. They tried him and he, ultimately was uh, found not guilty and he stepped aside a year later in 2005 and retired from the, the army. So people remember this general as the one who had the courage to tell Blaise Compaore that you cannot have um, a private army which is not Republican serving your security needs. And here he is coming back possibly to the helm of this seat as leader of Burkina Faso. Is that a good thing? Eh? Um, it's dangerous. It's the army solidified itself. I think at the moment they have the guns, they control all the, all the cards. Um, the question is, what is the timetable? The timetable for proper change, which is a democratic change. Failing a timetable... What does that mean, though? I keep well, hearing this about democratic change, and you've heard President Obama talk about it. François Hollande saying, you know, do the right decision. Mm -hmm. Democratic change, it's the headline thing that we say, don't we? But what does that actually mean for the people in the capital and the people in the country. It means that the When army, they've had a rule that hasn't had that for 27 years. Uh, absolutely. It means the army should go back to where it belongs, in the barracks. It, it, the army is meant to protect the people, not be in charge of the people. It, it means that there must be a process by which we must see the constitutional reforms applied, but we must have parliament take control, we must have elections for which the people can take part, and we must have a leader that eventually comes out of it, which is not the military. What we've seen in the past is that military leaders like these come in through the stealth, with their military uniforms in occasions like these, beg for time, press ahead and take part in these elections as sitting presidents. That's the worry, that's the problem. Is it likely though, that well, scenario that you just paint there in an idealistic fashion that they're going to move towards democratic change where the army are in the sidelines? I mean, how much of a realistic prospect is that? What is the alternative? Well, it's not the question of the alternative. It depends on the plant of pressure that's applied for a key institution. The African Union has got to show leadership right now. They would have to offer something to them to say, if you do not form a, a, a government of unity, a process of change, a timetable for reforms, uh, and elections within an agreed framework, sanctions would apply. There would be sanctions that would be applied on whoever's in charge, be it the military guys, or, or there will be some pressure applied for that change to happen pretty I know quickly. you're both going to be very interested to hear this. The Reuters news agency are reporting that a convoy believed to be carrying, and they're now calling him ex-Bikino Faso, President Kompari, is seen travelling towards southern town of Po near Ghana. Uh, that is a source that's being cited by Reuters. Uh, an obvious route, Lamine? Um, not an obvious route. Uh, people are, were expecting Blaise Compaore, if he were to leave power, to maybe travel to the Ivory Coast, where he is really very friendly with the Ivorian uh, leader, Alassane Ouattara. He helped him when he was uh, uh, in trouble. Uh, he won the election, but he, ha he needed a rebellion to get him actually uh, sworn in. Uh, so going to Ivory Coast is rather... Uh, a more reasonable thing for a president compared to do. 
than heading towards Ghana. Po is somewhere uh, <laughs> on the way to Ghana. And we know that in Ghana, I don't think that he is seen as a guy that would be welcome.